Hi, I'm Dr. Kayla Daniel, the naughty nutritionist, but even though laughter is good medicine, today's topic is going to be serious. I'm talking about seizures. Now, if you're at all like me, you might have thought that seizures are rare, but the fact is they occur to one out of ten Americans, and it's not just epileptics. Uh, if you've had a stroke, uh, a brain injury, got a tumor, suffering from an infection such as meningitis, fragile X syndrome, Down syndrome, autism, and also possibly from metabolic disturbances, uh, hypoglycemia, or really high levels of calcium or sodium, or really low levels. There are, in fact, many causes of seizures, and in many cases, people have seizures, and doctors have not yet figured out why. So there's a great deal of research that is still required. But there's one source of seizures that I didn't even know, and I'm known as the anti-soy lady. But recent research coming out of the University of Wisconsin-Madison indicates that soy can exacerbate seizures. Now, the average American, of course, probably doesn't think he or she is eating a whole lot of soy. But the bottom line is more than 60% of processed and packaged foods contain soy ingredients. And we find soy in almost 100% of fast foods. But the populations that are, in fact, consuming the very most soy are people who are doing it consciously. And they would include vegans who are using soy as both meat and dairy replacement. And also anyone who is health conscious who is, say, eating a whole lot of soy or drinking soy milk because they think it will help with menopausal symptoms or will help lower cholesterol and improve the risks of heart disease or anything else. Now, I want to make that clear, that's just not true. Those are marketing myths from the soy industry. But the populations who are at the very highest risk would include infants on soy infant formula. These bottle-fed babies are very much at high risk because they are very small, they're at a key developmental stage, their bodies and brains are developing and because they're not eating anything else. Very vulnerable. Another population you may not be thinking about, prisoners. Prisoners are being subjected to very high soy diets in the state of Illinois and other states as well because the cheap food will help the budget. But many of these prisoners are having terrible, terrible health problems, including a higher risk of seizure. I don't have figures on the numbers of seizures occurring in today's prison population, but a study from 1978 in the Journal of the American Medical Association is extremely interesting because it reports uh, seizures at the level of 1.9%, and that was three times more than in the general population. Now, I want to be totally clear here. I'm not blaming soy. The prisoners most likely had violent tendencies, perhaps from brain damage or other causes going way, way back, and that leading in turn to crime and incarceration. But the point I do want to make is that a high soy diet is likely to make things worse. And that would have been true to their diets back in, 19, in the 1970s when it was a whole lot of soy grits and textured vegetable protein extending hamburger and other dishes to make it cheap and economical for the state. Or today's budget, which is so heavily emphasizing uh, soy analog products. Obviously, if prisoners are experiencing more neurological damage because of soy, they're not likely to get out to become rehabilitated, productive members of society. But let's look at some other captive populations as well. Let's look at infants put on soy formula. Soy formula, 25% of the bottle-fed market today. And that does not bode well for their developing bodies and brains. 
Dr. Carol Westmark of the Wasteman Center for Developmental Disorders at the University of Wisconsin-Madison decided to test the hypothesis that soy isoflavins, that is the estrogens, would increase seizures. And in fact, they found greater likelihood of audiogenic seizures and wild running in the juvenile mice that had a isoflavin-enhanced uh, mouse chow. Now, what do we mean by wild running and audiogenic seizures? Well, audiogenic seizures are caused by an alarm going off, by sound. And the wild running is a totally out of control kind of running in which the mice lose the so-called writing reflex. And uh, if they don't regain that, they will in fact die from the seizure. If they do regain the writing reflex, they appear normal after the seizure is over. So what's the takeaway for us and our children? Let me quote Dr. Westmark here. She writes, our data suggests that soy-based infant formulas may lower seizure threshold, particularly in babies genetically predisposed to developmental disorders. Thus, understanding the negative effects of soy phytoestrogens and modulating intake during pregnancy and infancy could prevent neurological damage during critical periods of sensory development. Can't get much more clear than that, but you know, I'm going to try. The bottom line is minimize your soy intake if you are pregnant and do not give soy infant formula to your baby. I'd also like to quote a few other stats on seizures because they surprise me and I think you're going to find these interesting. Seizures occur along with Alzheimer's disease in 10 to 22 percent of patients. With Fragile X syndrome, 18 to 23 percent. With Down syndrome, 8 percent. And with autism, we have an epidemic of autism in our children today, 21 to 38 percent and traumatic brain injury, a whopping 53%. So this research coming from Dr. Westmark and her colleagues at the University of Wisconsin, it is very important and very, very relevant. For more on this important soy and seizure study, please do visit my website, drkaylaDaniel.com. I'm Dr. Kayla Daniel, the Naughty Nutritionist, and once again, my message has been practice safe soy.